Hello, friend. Jim here at Science Talk. Um, I have a report to share with you of a topic I have covered uh, extensively before, and we'll continue to do so, obviously. And it has to deal with the uh, Arctic soils. And basically, this study, which was published in the journal Nature, is simply uh, reporting data that confirms what we already know, but that's how science works. Keep gathering data to confirm or not confirm a hypothesis, gather more data that supports uh, a hypothesis, etc. So what am I talking about? Arctic soils producing huge methane leaks. So Permafrost, I, I've discussed this with you guys before, and um, it should not come as any surprise that it's uh, the Arctic soils contained within the permafrost is thawing faster than anyone had predicted. Just like Greenland's ice is melting faster than anyone had predicted because you know, yes, scientists tend to be conservative with their estimates and, and their extrapolations. And usually it's erring on the side of caution as they're assuming a linear uh, situation when it's not. Positive feedback loop, right, helps foster the, the response, the signals that are seen. And that's exactly what's happening in this case here with the Arctic soil, just like with the Greenland's ice, as the thawing or melting proceeds, it's increasing in a nonlinear, curvilinear function. Right? Nonlinear, but it's proceeding at a curvilinear function, usually exponential. One fourth of all the land in the northern half of the globe is defined as permafrost. Keep in mind, the boreal forest is the largest terrestrial biome on the planet. And it's a pretty much a broad band right around, uh, you know, the Northern Hemisphere, you know, starting like about 50, 55 degrees uh, North latitude, going up to, you know, 70, 75 degrees North latitude, you know, plus or minus. And as I discussed with you before, this uh, long, this, this soil that's been frozen for a very long time contains this detritus of plant materials and other life forms that you know have died over millennia and um, microbes. So now what's happening is the uh, it's all starting to thaw out, as I've discussed with you before on numerous occasions. So these permanently frozen soils hold right now in a quote unquote harmless state because it's still in the ground 1600 billion with it be tons of carbon twice as much as exists in the atmosphere let me repeat that one thousand six hundred billion tons of carbon one other way of saying it is 1.6 trillion tons of carbon which is twice than what's in the atmosphere and that's not even counting what's in the ocean and of course positive feedback loops as discussed with you many times before the arctic warms the, the ground starts to thaw out microbes kick in because hey you know we don't have to stay frozen and they start uh, decomposing things and methane starts getting released they start working on the the carbon so of course now the carbon which is uh permafrost has always been a carbon sink now becomes a carbon source so you get this release of methane and we know methane is a more potent greenhouse gas, which will accelerate the warming that we've already been uh, measuring. 
and then you get the consequential collapse of the of the ground the soil you get the slumping right you get the flooding slumping leads to landslides changes the habitats changes the contours uh they've had to relocate villages in alaska because uh, you know literally the ground just fell off the, underneath the the buildings and into the ocean without the sea ice no no protection from from wave battering the shore along with the thawing and you get whole chunks of real estate dropping off into the ocean so um professor merit Turetsky, who is an ecologist at the university of guelph in uh, canada i think it's just outside toronto he says we are watching this sleeping giant wake up right in front of our eyes We work in areas where permafrost contains a lot of ice and our field sites are being destroyed by a abrupt collapse of this ice, not gradually over decades, but very quickly over months to years. Does the term tipping point mean anything? Miriam Jones of the US Geological Survey uh, says this, this abrupt thaw abrupt thaw is changing forested ecosystems through thaw lakes and wetlands resulting in a wholesale transformation of the landscape that not only impacts carbon feedbacks to climate but is also altering wildlife habitat and damaging infrastructure i did a video segment some time ago where i talked about the ramifications of a thawing permafrost to the infrastructure of communities that live within the Arctic. The roads collapsing, buildings sinking into the ground, that kind of stuff. Please go check that out. So these two signs I just mentioned, Dr. Turetsky and Dr. Jones, you know, published their findings uh, in, and opinions in the journal Nature, that the, and they basically are concluding that the thaw is happening far faster than anyone had predicted. The Arctic is warming at a rate faster than almost anywhere else on Earth. Well, I've mentioned that uh, numerous times before in prior video segments. But what's basically happening is that the data is coming in that further uh, supports uh, the observations, hypotheses, what have you. Right now, though, the thought affects less than one-fifth of the entire permafrost. But even this relatively small area, when compared to the rest of it, has the potential to double what climate scientists call feedback, right? Positive feedback. Add more greenhouse gas to the atmosphere, increase warming, increase thawing, increase release of greenhouse gas from the ground, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A runaway system. Right? Now, I've mentioned before in the past, um, Dr. Igor Semelotov who uh, is the scientist uh, at the International Arctic Research Center on campus of University of Alaska Fairbanks. And he and his wife uh, have been leading the charge, so to speak, on just basically going all over the Siberia, uh, measuring what's going on with the permafrost. The, big, the two big questions are how much is in the ground? Well, now we have an idea, 1.6 trillion tons of carbon. Now, the next big question is, at what rate does it get released? Does it happen slowly, intermittently, or is there large pulses? If the latter, that's going to spell trouble. So now I just been uh, I just did a, a series of videos describing the uh, the weather situation here in Alaska, uh, you know, since the onset of summer, and you know they say, well, okay, this goes on in Alaska. Well, what happens in the Arctic does not stay in the Arctic. What happens in the Arctic does affect the entire planet. The Arctic is warming the fastest we see, and now the rest of the planet is going to start feeling it as well. Here is an important concept. Stable climate patterns are maintained by stable temperatures. 
Makes sense, right? If the temperature is stable, so will the climate pattern be stable. Because what's climate? Long-term weather averages. Temperature is no longer stable, you're not going to maintain the long-term weather averages, i.e. you're not going to maintain the climate. So as the polar north warms twice as fast as the average for the rest of the world, the difference between tropics and polar regions begins to accelerate the advance of spring and delay the next freeze to bring weather extremes and ever higher sea level rises, which could soon start to affect human economies. Another way of putting this, and probably you know, a little easier to understand terms, as the difference between tropics and polar regions basically lessens. In other words, the temperature gradient decreases. So you don't have that sharp change over, you don't have a, quite the high gradient. What's going to happen? And I've discussed this before. It's also going to affect the pressure gradient. So now the jet stream doesn't stay in nice zonal bands. The jet stream starts to meander, but also meanders at slower rates. So yeah, it dips down. And it, you know, northern hemisphere is still the northern hemisphere. The, you know, the, the, the earth is still tilted away from the sun. So you're still gonna have the cool temperatures being brought down to mid-latitude from the dipping jet stream, bringing the the cooler air from the Arctic. Now, when we say the Arctic is warming, we're not getting 55 below, we're getting maybe 20 below. Well, that's 35 degrees. That's significant. As I said, the days of getting, you know, three, four weeks on end of 55 below are over. Now, it may dip down to 40 below a couple of days and leave. So, uh, yeah, 20 below is going to be cold to most folks, but up here in Alaska, that's balmy. <laughs> Quite blunt about it. <laughs> Especially when compared to 55 below. I mean, the old joke was we have a cold snap of 55 below and then it warms up 30 below and everyone goes yay we can go to town now and get and do errands seriously that's what it used to be 55 below gasoline doesn't vaporize too well so it's a little hard to get the vehicles going you know so you're pretty much stuck 30 below yeah you can drive around a bit you still got to dress for it but you know again it's a 20 25 degree difference it's like they're between 40 and 65 above right think of it that way but we're not seeing those days anymore so definitely things are changing so the arctic is warming and that's affecting the rest of the planet now of course researchers have been you know warning about you know what's the consequences of you know, all this permafrost dying all the methane being pumped into the atmosphere etc but it's only in recent months that climate scientists have begun to see the effect of ice melt at depth, ice melt at depth, not in the ground, upon the soils that for now support Arctic roads, buildings, pipelines, and not to mention what it's doing to the, uh, to the ecosystems affecting the, the flora and fauna. Now, the Trans-Alaska Pipeline coming from Prudhoe Bay down to Valdez is 800 miles long. Half of that is above ground. Half of that is buried. Now, where they buried it is supposedly in ground that's uh, classified as thaw-stable. Meaning that if you got a bunch of frozen pebbles and gravel and rocks, and it thaws out, you have a pile of pebbles, gravel, and rocks. And presumably the grounds won't do much shifting or slumping. It's when you have what's called the lurs, which is basically frozen clay and silt, that when that thaws out, you get what's called liquefaction. That stuff just becomes a slimy, oozing mess. 
And that is extremely unstable. That's called thaw unstable. So where the pipeline travels above ground that is thaw unstable, that's where you see it up on the shoes, up on the, on the, you know, on the platforms there. You've probably seen those pictures of the pipeline zigzagging around, right? The ground underneath that is thaw unstable. But this could all be affected. And this ties into the video that I made, uh, that I referenced prior, an earlier video I made about the effects on the infrastructure. So, what's happening is that this accelerating thaw in the Arctic is, you know, dumping more methane into the atmosphere. Paris Accord? What Paris Accord? There's no way in hell you're going to keep this to under. Uh, 1.5 degrees, not even under 2 degrees C, let alone 1.5. We're already at 1.3. We'll probably blow past 1.8 at the end of the, by 2030, if not sooner. So this is really not good. Not good at all. So, um, again, I'm keeping you guys up to date on what's going on with, uh, you know, the climate situation, the permafrost situation. I did an earlier video segment where there's another uh, added joy, and that is now we're finding the release of nitrous oxide, which is turning out to be also a greenhouse gas. More fun. No sarcasm. So, bottom line. The thawing is accelerating. It's affecting the ground structure. The uh, now the frozen uh, uh, ice is usually called ice lenses. That's all melting. Okay, ice does melt. The permafrost thaws because there's no change of state. Right? Remember that. So, got the ice melting. The ground is slumping. It's getting landslides. It's affecting the, the roads, buildings, the ecosystems as well as dumping more methane into the atmosphere with the result that we're going to keep blowing past, you know, whatever, you know, Paris Accord agreement was, we're going to blow past those and we're going to keep uh, adding, uh, increasing the temperature of the planet. And this is happening at a much, much faster rate than previously uh, determined. There you have it. Thank you for your time. Hey folks, it's a reminder to please share my videos with others and to also please tell others of my channel. Please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so that you receive notifications when I upload uh, new videos. I also hope that you will consider uh, supporting the work that I do and supporting this channel by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.